Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to lesson number three of the series of tutorial on how to create a premium theme for WordPress. If you enjoy my tutorials and you would like to see more, please give a thumbs up to this video, subscribe to my channel, or click on the link in the description below to learn how you can support me and improve the content on this channel. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to create sub pages for our newly generated custom admin page and how to handle some weird aspect of WordPress related to the admin menu bar. Before starting, I wanna take a look at what I generated the last section. I created a custom menu page in the admin bar in my administration panel. If you take a look in the administration panel, you should have a newly generated menu item here with your custom name, your custom icon, and your custom slug. The slug that we specified as a fourth attribute for our add menu page should always be a single word. This is really important, especially if we want to create some sub page for this custom admin page. The slug should be one single word. And if we have, like in my case, multiple words, these words should be connected between each other with an underscore instead of a dash. It's not really a mistake, but the underscore is a generic connection, is a generic symbol pretty much in every coding language to connect multiple words related to the same thing. So in this case is a slug. And it's also a kind of a useful selection thing because if I write a dash and I wanna select the entire slug here, I cannot do it with a double click. If I double click, you see the selection stops at a dash. If I have an underscore, the double click highlights both words because the underscore connects these two words as they were a single word. And this is the proper way of naming an important slug. So what we have to do right now, we want to create some sub page in this newly generated sunset admin page. If we take a look in the administration panel of WordPress, you will notice that pretty much all this section come with a list of sub pages. So for appearance, we have theme, customize, editor, for the plugins, we have this, settings, we have all these other sections. What we wanna do, we wanna also do pretty much the same for our sunset admin page. We wanna create a list of subsections to split all the options that we wanna save for our theme to avoid to clutter too much one single page and keep everything more organized. So. To do that, we always have to write our code inside the same action. We don't have to create another action because the generation of the main menu page and all the sub pages happens always inside this hook, inside this moment, the admin menu generation. So we don't have to rewrite another action. Let's go down here. And to keep everything organized, always write a little bit of comments, just mostly for you, especially when we're gonna have a huge uh, functions file with different functions and different hooks, it's always better having a, a little bit of a hint of what we're doing and what we coded because we could easily forget. So this is generate sunset admin page. And now here we can create another comment, generate sunset admin sub pages. And now we can start coding what we have to do. So if we wanna create a sub menu page, instead of using add menu page, we have to use the function add underscore sub menu page. And as you can see here, we have as usual as the menu page, a lot of different attributes that we can use to generate whatever we want. So the first attribute is the parent slug. The parent slug gives us the ability to connect a sub menu page to generate a sub menu page and put it inside an already existing admin page. So if for example, I wanna create a custom menu page 
inside my sunset theme custom page, I have to use the same slug that I gave to the menu page. In this case is alicat underscore sunset. So let's copy this and let's put it here, always inside single quote. So we're gonna print it as a string. The second parameter is the page title that is gonna appear inside our page. So in my case, I want this sunset settings. And this is the menu title, the one that is gonna appear in the sub menu section. So the link that we're gonna click to access, and I want these to be just settings. The capability is exactly the same as the menu page. So we wanna be sure that the capability to access this page is at the same level of our parent page, of our main admin section. So in this case, I use manage options to be sure that uh, the user that can access this section is an administrator. I'm gonna put also here manage option. The slug menu is pretty much exactly the same as this one, but of course this is the sub settings page. So I wanna extend alicat sat and set underscore settings. And here we can use the callback function to generate the actual HTML inside my theme. And also here the callback function has to be called as a string. So let's call sunset theme settings page and semicolon at the end. And now we wanna create an empty function just to not trigger an error with the same name of the callback function of the submenu page. So now we generated this, we follow pretty much all the rules of WordPress and we use the proper code, but we're gonna have a different result. And now we're gonna see why this submenu page is not actually properly working. So let's save it, let's access the administration panel, let's refresh. And now, as you notice here, we have sunset, and then we have the page sunset repeated with the same page, and then we have the page settings. So why this is happening? Basically, if you add whatever sub menu to an admin menu that doesn't have any sub menu, like it was before, the sunset was just by itself, automatically WordPress is gonna generate the first menu item identical to your admin main parent. So it doesn't give you the ability to have a page link sunset and then a second link that is different from the, say, the same page admin parent. If you take a look, for example, on settings, we have general here. If we click on settings, we don't actually go on settings, but we go straight to the general settings page. That is the first sub page of the settings section. So how can we do the same having sunset, but instead of having repeated the same link sunset, having settings as a first position? Well, it's pretty easy, but of course it's kind of tricky because it looks like a mistake, it's look, it looks like a repetition, a, a useless repetition, like a redundant piece of code, but it's actually really useful. So we can keep pretty much the code as it is right now, but we have to actually repeat exactly the same settings of the main menu page code. So the title of the page has to be sunset, theme options as we specify uh, in the title of the main menu page. The menu name can be settings, absolutely, no problem. And the slug has to be exactly the same as the menu page. So instead of alicat sunset settings, just use alicat underscore sunset. So exactly the same. And because we want exactly the same page also for this sub menu section, we're gonna call the same function to generate the main menu section. And in this case is the same function here, the sunset theme create page, we're gonna call the same function. Let's save it. Let's access our administration panel, refresh. And as you can see here, we don't have any more the subsection because we created the same option. We use the same options of the admin menu page. And I can understand this can be slightly confusing, but look what happened if we create another sub page. For example, 
we're gonna use, of course, the same slug because we wanna put it in the same settings position. As a title, we wanna put sunset CSS options and the menu name is gonna be custom CSS. The capability is always the same and the slug in this case is different. Sunset underscore CSS. And the function, the callback function, has to be different from the main menu. So we're going to use the second function that we created before, of course, always as a string, so with single quotes. Semicolon at the end. Save it. Let's go in the admin panel again, refresh it. And as you can see here, we achieved what we want. So we have sunset, the custom admin menu subpage that we created that it has the exactly the same slug. So is the same page, but we're not gonna have repeated sunset in here. And then we have another completely separated subpage that is custom CSS. So basically with this trick, basically creating a custom subpage that has exactly the same settings of the admin parent page, we can customize the first page that the uh, that WordPress access when we click on the parent menu in our administration panel. And if we don't want this to be settings because it's too confusing, maybe it can be confused with settings, we can change it, we, like general maybe. And let's go back, refresh, and we change the menu name, but the link is always identical to the main area, and we are not going to have repeated sunset twice. The other thing that I want to do now that we have full control on the generation of our menu and submenu is starting writing something inside our page. Now, pretty much our page are totally empty. We don't have any information. So let's take a look on how to do this also in a proper way. A lot of users, a lot of other developers, they kind of like to write things in line. Like for example, they use an echo, they use an h1 tag, let's close the tag, and they use a uh, sunset theme options like that. They print it, semicolon, let's refresh it. And you have the title here. And of course, you can do the same with the other function that we created here. But in this case, it's sunset custom CSS to give it another title. Let's go back in our admin page, custom CSS, and we have the other title. So as you can see here, pretty much you can write whatever HTML portion, a PHP portion of code you want to print in your custom page. But this could be kind of messy, especially if your page has a lot of custom options and has a lot of custom functions to save, update. Maybe you have some JavaScript code to make it look pretty and you have some custom CSS. This can be really messy to look, especially if you have multiple pages and you have multiple functions for all those pages. This file is gonna be massively long. It's pretty hard to maintain. What I really like to do is I like to create a template to put inside that template custom HTML and custom PHP, all, all the function that we wanna print in my page and then call the template inside here. So let's access uh, the root file, the folder file of our sunset theme. And in the include file, I want to create another subfolder called templates. And inside templates, I want to create a new file called sunset-admin.php. And inside here, I want to write a little bit of HTML boilerplate. So if, for example, we have a file with this information, h1 title and h3 for a section title and a paragraph with a bunch of information for our user, we can then, in the function that is related to our admin page, 
call that specific file to use as a custom template. And in this case, I want to use a require once to avoid that if we call this function multiple times and the file is already required, is already included in my administration panel, I'm not going to require it again multiple times. So this function prevents us to pull the file multiple times if not necessary. Inside here, I want to use the usual WordPress function to point my location to the actual directory of my file. So let's use get template directory. And with a dot, let's connect the strings. And with single quote, we have to go inside the folder ink, and then inside the subfolder templates. And then we have to point the actual file that is sunset-admin.php. Let's put a semicolon at the end, save it. Let's access our administration panel. And after refresh it, as you can see now, we have all the HTML that we wrote inside our PHP file. This is really useful because this prevents us to uh, extend too much this functions file and just require the actual template section that we want to call. And because this template section, it's pulled, is required inside uh, WordPress, we can access all the PHP information that we want. So if, for example, I want to print blog info and I want to put name save it, let's access our admin panel, refresh, we're gonna have the information sunset name. So this file, because is included dynamically in our administration panel, has by default access to all the WordPress information. And this is really useful because in this way we can create custom options, save custom settings from our user, like we checkbox a form, some custom information, and reuse those custom information in our front end of our amazing sunset theme. So also for today's lesson is pretty much it. I hope you enjoy it and give it a try with this uh, sub menu section oh, that can be kind of confusing, especially repeating all the settings for the administration parent page. But this is the way WordPress works and it's kind of weird, but we need to get used to it if we want to build some specific custom settings. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can click on a link in the description below to learn how you can support me in many different ways and help me to improve the content on this channel and make everything looks shiny and better. So thank you again for checking this video. And until next lesson, as usual, happy coding.